All right, today we're going to be talking about the Solomon Genesis. For those of you who are relatively new to the channel, you might notice that I do review a lot of Solomon shoes, but I just want you to know that I'm not an ambassador. I have no affiliation with Solomon. Um, the shoes that I review on this channel, I buy with my own money. So this review is completely unbiased and I'm really excited to jump into this review. With that said, jumping into this one, um, I recently reviewed the S-Lab version of the Solomon Genesis. And so, I mean, logically I will be comparing these two quite heavily in this review, but you know, if you're interested in a more in-depth view of the S-Lab version of this shoe, go check that review out after you watch this one. But diving into Solomon as a brand, they're very well known for their trail running shoes. And I've had, you know, ups and downs with this brand over the last six or seven years running in their shoes. They, I've had some really good experiences and some not so good experiences. So my goal for this review today is to help you make a decision on whether or not these shoes are the right trail shoes for you. So let's jump into it. Coming in at $150, these are about $30 above an average trail shoe price. I think most trail shoes come in around $120, so these ones are $30 more than the average shoe. And hopefully after watching this, you can make a more informed decision for yourself whether or not you think spending an extra $30 to pick these up is worth it. In terms of fit and sizing, these shoes fit true to size. I wear a size nine in almost every shoe and these were spot on in terms of length. In terms of width, I mentioned for the S-Lab version of these shoes that they were a bit wider than normal S-Labs, which, which put them in at an average trail shoe for Solomon. And I would say the same thing for these. These are an average width for Solomon. And I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it again on this one, Solomon shoes do tend to run narrow. So an average width Solomon shoe is a bit on the narrow side compared to some other trail shoes out on the market. But that doesn't bother me at all. I know there's a, there's a trend to have the wider toe box. That just wasn't for me. I tend to like a shoe that uh, kind of hugs my foot. And these shoes did a great job on the width and the length in my opinion. The weight of the Solomon Genesis is 9.5 ounces, which puts them slightly lighter than the average trail running shoe. And this shoe is, I think it's 0.4 ounces heavier than the S-Lab version. And so that's one differentiator between the two shoes. And so if you're looking for a, a lighter shoe, the S-Lab version might be the version that you go for when you're looking at the two shoes side by side. Moving on to the outsole and looking at the traction, the, the depth of the lugs between the S-Lab version and the, the non-S-Lab Genesis, I, I don't think that there is much difference. The pattern is slightly different between the two. Both shoes are, have proved to be fantastic in terms of traction on the terrain that I run on. Moving on to the midsole, the cushion of this shoe, the heel has a stack height of 34 and 26 in the front, which brings us to an eight millimeter drop and in case you're wondering, that is identical to the S-Lab version. And just like the S-Lab version, these are very rigid and they have very little roll to them when you're walking. And I actually recorded a video comparing these shoes to the Thundercross shoes in terms of roll when you're just walking, like a heel to toe roll. And you can hear the difference, just uh, how my, my forefoot kind of slaps on the ground and I'll play that. When I put these on, I was worried because of the lack of flexibility, because of that you know, lack of roll from heel to toe. But once I put it on, I was incredibly blown away once I started running. The amount of energy return that I'm getting from these shoes is almost identical to S the S-Lab version. In fact, I don't even think there is a difference. It's so hard to tell because I've put so many miles on each of these shoes. I don't think there was a difference between the two. And if there was, it was I wasn't able to tell. So take that for what it's worth both shoes, the S-Lab version and this version, are incredibly good at giving you return from your, your um, giving you energy return as you push off the ground instead of just absorbing it, almost like you're running in sand. Because there are some shoes that have really soft cushion, but when you go to push off, you're not getting that energy return. And 
both the Genesis and the S-Lab Genesis do a fantastic job with the energy return. And I tried, once again, to try and find any information about a specific rock plate or a new kind of cushioning. But as far as I can tell, these use the same energy foam as most of their other shoes, and I couldn't find any information about a rock plate. And so, as far as I know, it has to be something to do with the rigidity of the shoe. Another thing with the midsole, and this kind of goes into the upper, is this, this little piece right here. And this is a piece that I thought made it look a little bit overbuilt, and you can see it on this too. This one, it also has it on the inside, on the inside here. Um, on the S-Lab version, it's not labeled. Right here it says active chasis. And I didn't know what a chasis was, so I looked it up. Chasis is, chasises? Whatever the plural version of that is. Um, you find them in cars, and an active chasis would be something that allows for stabilization during shock absorption. And I don't really know if, you know, there's any sort of technology in this little triangle arrow looking thing uh, that actually does give you some stabilization. It seems a little gimmicky to me. I don't, I don't know if that provides some sort of rigidity right there. But anyways, I don't think it looks terrible. I think it looks kind of cool, I guess. And you know, if it provides a little bit of stability, great. All I know is it didn't bother me at all. And you know, if it's useful, great. And now combining the outsole, the traction, and the midsole, the cushioning, I found these to be just as bulletproof as the S-Lab versions. I was incredibly blown away with the amount of protection that I got with these shoes. And the same thing, the same kind of problem, if you will, was with these shoes as was with the S-Lab versions, is it gave me an incredible amount of confidence, almost too much, to the point where I was bombing down hills and being a little bit reckless because I wasn't feeling, you know, the sharp rocks and the, the roots and things. I was, I was going fast and feeling pretty good. But the difference now is that I have actually become quite comfortable with the new feel of protection with these shoes. I don't roll my ankle almost ever in these shoes. And you know, I, and so they, they've never felt unstable, but when I first started running in the S-Lab version, I, I mentioned that I rolled my ankle quite a bit and it's because you know, <laughs> I was incredibly protected and just reckless. But I have adapted to that unconsciously. It's not like I had to you know, think about it too much. It just slowly happened and so, um, Moving into the upper here, they have this new material, the same material that they had on the S-Lab version. They call it, I believe it's Matrix. That's how I would pronounce it. And it's supposed to be this Kevlar thread material that they use to construct the upper. And Kevlar is the, the type of material that they used to manufacture or sew other highly durable and wear resistant material. And some of that goes into bulletproof vests and other things like that. But anyways, um, since I am much, I have m many more miles in these shoes, you can already start to see where I usually get the hot spot. So I'm gonna walk up to the camera here. And so right here, you can see that's where I usually get my hot spot. And in other shoes, I have started to wear a hole right there because of this is where it creases every time I step. And so right there, and then on the inside right there, you can kind of see, I hope, I hope you're able to see exactly what I'm talking about there. Um, but the good news is, is that I think that this new matrix material is doing what it is marketed to do, what they're saying that it's going to do and that it's holding up remarkably well. And so I don't know if there's anyone else out there that has had similar problems with their Solomon shoes in the past where they would get a hole just from, you know, lots of bending, over many, many miles, uh, these shoes seem to be holding up better. So time will tell as I continue to run in these because um, I don't want to give away my summary, but I will continue to run in these. <laughs> Another part of the upper that I have mentioned on pretty much every video since the Sense Ride 5s is that um, a lot of these newer, newer shoes are having this problem where, um, where the tongue meets the rest of the upper here and uh, there's a lot of excess material in there where the tongue gets sewn into the rest of the upper part of the shoe here. I am incredibly pleased and excited to say that um, this shoe has almost no material in there, uh, excess material where they have sewn in the, to the, the tongue. Um, if I reach in there, I can kind of find it, 
but it's it, it's almost nothing compared to some of the other shoes, including the S Lab version. The S Lab version has has significantly more excess material in there compared to the non S Lab version, which is interesting. I thought they would you know be cutting all the weight possible out of the S Lab version, but anyways, all of that to say, no problems here. Now I want to highlight outside of the weight and you know the slight difference in the traction on the bottom of the of the shoe. I want to highlight the biggest difference between this shoe and the S Lab version. So if you look at the shoe on the uppers, there's a huge difference. The S Lab version has the debris guard, I'm going to call it. I don't know what I don't, I don't know if Solomon has a name for it, but I'm going to call it the debris guard and it, it's essentially this sock like fit that comes up around your ankle on the S Lab version. The non S Lab version is like a normal shoe. There is when you put your foot in there, there's no sock like uh, fit that comes up around your ankle to keep debris out. And in my experience, that keeps about 50% more dirt out than when you, you know, just wear a normal shoe. And over the course of 100 miles or 75 miles or 50 miles, however long your long races are, that might make a difference. If you are planning on doing a massive ultra run or ultra race and you tend to get a lot of debris in your in your shoe and you have to stop every once in a while and take off your shoe and dump all the all the sand and the dirt and the rocks out, the having that sock liner around your ankle that could keep about 50% in my experience it might keep out about 50% of that rock and dirt and everything else that gets in there in the in the long runs but for you know your average everyday trainer up to 15 to 20 miles you're probably not going to see that big of a difference at least in my opinion i did a 12 plus mile run in these you know there was still some some dirt and some rocks in there after my run. I've done, I think the longest I've done in these is 10. Um, I mean, the longest single run I've done in these is 10. And you know, I didn't never have to take my shoes off to dump the rocks out. But you know, if that's worth an extra $50 to you, now you know that if you're going to upgrade to the S Lab version, you're going to get that sock liner and you're gonna get 0.4 ounces less weight. But outside of the sock liner and the 0.4 ounces, those were really the only two measurable, noticeable differences between the two shoes. Last but definitely not least, the design of these shoes. I think these are really cool looking shoes. I think these look better than the S Lab version, if I'm being honest. And that's my subjective opinion, but I think these look more aggressive. I like the colors better. I'm, I'm a big fan of black and I, I like when the, the cushion, the midsole is black and the tread is black. I just think it, it just turns out to be a really cool looking shoe. And so, you know, of my, from my subjective thoughts on this, I would choose by looks alone, I would choose these over the S Lab version. In summary, I absolutely love these shoes. I would highly recommend these shoes to any trail runner. As I've mentioned in pretty much all of my shoe, trail running shoe review videos, I'm looking for a shoe that feels like an extension of my foot. I do not want to worry about my shoe malfunctioning or not performing or just causing irritation. And this shoe fits that requirement. It feels like an extension of my foot. I do not worry about this shoe. I do not notice this shoe. And I know the, the big question mark, I think coming down to this is whether or not this shoe is worth buying or if you should spend $50 more and get the S Lab version. And I don't have a, an answer for you. I think it's a very subjective decision. And I don't think that you will be disappointed with either one of these shoes. I think it comes down to, like I said, if you want that sock liner around your ankle and if the 0.4 ounces makes a big difference to you. And it might, if you're running 100 miles, uh, 0.4 ounces adds up over the course of, you know, however long it takes you to run 100 miles. So, as a, a summary for just the Genesis shoe, not comparing it to the S Lab shoe, 
I would highly recommend this shoe. I don't think there is anyone out there that would be upset with the performance of this shoe. I think the energy return is fantastic. I think the protection is spot on. If you're looking for a minimalist shoe and you like the feel of the trail and you like to be careful as you're running down so you don't hurt yourself, then maybe stay away from this shoe. But outside of the extreme protection, if that's not a deal breaker for you, I don't see why anyone would, di would dislike this shoe. So. I hope that covered everything you want to know about this shoe. If there's anything else you're wondering about, uh, ask me in the comments. I'm usually pretty good at responding to those. But if this was helpful and it helped you make a decision, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you in the next video.